Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Meredith E. Phillips and today we're going to talk about 2022 goals. I hope you're excited about a new year, a new chance to achieve new things. I hope you had a great New Year's, a happy holidays if you had any celebrations going on and I hope you're feeling excited and rejuvenated in the new year. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and dive into what I hope to accomplish in 2022. Since this is obviously a writing channel, I'll go ahead and start with my writing goals. If you watched my video reviewing my 2021 goals and how I did in accomplishing or not accomplishing them, you know that especially for my writing goals, I way overshot what I would be able to get done within a 12 month span of time. So this year I tried to set my expectations for myself a little lower. I tried to be realistic with what I thought I would be able to accomplish. Part of the problem right now I'm finding, especially with writing goals, is that I am in uncharted territory at this point. I've done multiple outlines. I know how long it takes me to outline. I've done multiple first drafts and finished them. I know how long it takes me to do a first draft, but now I'm into re-outlining and rewriting and revising and working on second drafts and I'm finding or I found last year that I really have no concept of how much time all of this is going to take me because I'm doing it for the first time. I'm learning along the way what works, what doesn't work. So when I'm looking forward to the next year, I really don't know what's completely realistic to expect of myself. So I don't really have a super solid goal that I'd like to accomplish by the end of 2022. I do have things I would like to accomplish and I basically have like a list of like, first I will do this, then I will do this, then I will do this. But I really have no sort of time limit. I'm gonna take the amount of time that it takes. My big, big goal that I am <laughs> hopefully confident that I'll be able to finish within the first quarter is the rewrite of my project model rom-com. I haven't looked at it in a minute and a half, but I was about midway through the story when I sort of, and cut things off and then I was working on NaNoWriMo stuff and then December I didn't do any writing and I haven't looked at it I haven't looked at it since the end of September mid-September but I know I was either at the midpoint or like right before the midpoint and I am hoping that I'll be able to finish that draft by the end of the first quarter but again if that doesn't happen we're just gonna take the amount of time it takes. Once I finish that second draft or the rewrite or whatever we want to call it I'm gonna look up I'm gonna look at the calendar and see what month it is and kind of set a new goal from there. Obviously, after I'm finished with this rewrite, I'm gonna to wanna to go back again because there's already things where I'm like, oh, I need to mention this earlier or I need to do this sooner or whatever. So I wanna go through and do sort of a third draft and overall revision of whatever I end up with after this rewrite. Again, I have no clue how long that kind of a third draft is gonna take me, so I have no sort of time limit for myself on that. I would love to have that finished by the end of the year, but we're not, we're not pushing for anything in particular. If by some miracle I manage to finish a third draft, the next step would be to get critique partner feedback and maybe beta reader feedback, not at the same time. When I would wanna do one and then the other, but that would be the next step. I don't know if I'm gonna to get to it this year, it's just the next step in the process. Really at the end of the day, in order to accomplish any of these writing goals, I need time and I need accountability. Last year I had tried to set different writing routines for myself. If you go back to that 2021 goals video, I outlined a very specific writing routine at the beginning of the year. About halfway through the year, I realized it was just not working the way I thought it would. I tried something new. That one worked a little better, but it was kind of hit or miss. And I realized, you know, you don't have to have a writing routine that you start in January and you carry through the entire year. That's not realistic for I think a lot of people because our lives change from season to season, different things come up in life, you gotta take a hiatus, you know, whatever. So instead of trying to set up a time or a schedule at the very beginning of the year and then stick to it every single week, what I'm planning to do is at the beginning of every week, I'm gonna look ahead at the week I have to come, I'm gonna consider how I'm feeling. If I'm absolutely exhausted for some reason, I'm not gonna push myself to do a bunch of writing work, but I'm gonna look ahead one week at a time and I'm gonna ask myself, okay, where do you have space within this coming week 
to do writing work. There might be some weeks that are real light in terms of work or family obligations or anything like that and I might have a lot of opportunity to write. There might be other weeks where I'm super busy or I've gotten behind on other stuff and I really want to focus on other things and maybe I only get an hour or two of writing in that week. But weeks differ so I want to that's gonna be that's gonna be my writing routine is looking at one week at a time scheduling it in my planner what I think I'm gonna be able to do that week and then going from there. I think that's not only going to be more realistic but it's also gonna take some of the pressure off that I had put on myself last year. So the timing taken care of, uh, the next thing is accountability. How am I going to hold myself to this routine from week to week? Some of that, of course, is gonna come down to just internal motivation. You have to want to do it. And that's something I've talked about in several videos last year. I'll link to some of those below if you wanna check those out. I did really enjoy doing the monthly wrap up videos at the beginning of the next month. So I do plan to continue those. That kind of allows me to say, hey, this is what I'm working on this month. And then the hope is the next month I'll be able to come back and say, oh, I was able to hit this goal or that goal or whatever. I also plan to share the same sort of goal updates over on Instagram. The live streams. The live streams were very helpful for me. It made me sit down and it made me get work done, sometimes on weeks where I really didn't want to necessarily, but I had it scheduled and it was kind of like, well, better sit down and do it since I'm having this live stream. So I do plan to continue doing the live streams maybe twice a month, that's what I was doing last year. That kind of schedule seemed pretty okay for me. It, it didn't seem overwhelming at any point. And of course, last year there were times where I did have to cancel live streams occasionally, not too often. And there were some months where I didn't do any on purpose. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm doing two every single month without fail, but generally two a month is what I'm going to aim for. And for writing, that's really all I have planned. I want to focus on the one project. I want to make as much progress in it as I can. In my wildest dreams, and this is the absolute most I could ever hope for in this year. It probably won't happen, but it would be amazing if I did. But in the absolute most productive thing that I can imagine for this year, I would love to have this story in shape enough that it is ready to be queried. I know I can hear my future self laughing at me now. It's fine. I said like absolute best case scenario, okay? I don't know if that's realistic at all, that's what I would love to have happen though. So let's move on. I do have a small reading goal. Last year I read about 40 books, which was the least amount of books I have read in a year in years. I, that's not very many books for me. I would love to hit 50 books this year. That's less than one a week. But again, I'm not going to rapidly pursue this. If I don't hit 50 books at the end of the year, I'm not gonna be like a mess on the floor sobbing that I didn't hit my reading goal. Like, it's fine. I'm gonna try to read a little bit more this year though. In terms of social media and what to expect on this channel for 2022, I kind of just wanna maintain what I've got going on. Last year I had big goals to hit a thousand subscribers and other things like that. And I feel like I kind of hit some of those big milestones and there isn't really I mean you could have subscriber goals but again like you know it's not really up to me whether you click the subscribe button you kind of just got to do it yourself so it's not really something that I can achieve on my own I don't like setting goals like that in the first place so I don't know there isn't like a number where I'm like oh my gosh I need to hit this number by the end of the year it doesn't really matter to me how many subscribers I have at the end of the year as long as it's more than what I started with that's really the only goal I have in terms of numbers. Same thing over on Instagram. I really, I, I hope people enjoy it. And if they do, they'll follow me. And if they don't, they won't. And I, I just, I'm kind of cool with what it is, you know? I do plan to continue my same Tuesday, Friday upload schedule here on YouTube and my Monday, Tuesday, Friday schedule over on Instagram. I would like to work on varying my content, especially over on Instagram. It looks a little samey right now. I really want to consider the question, what value am I providing to the people who see this stuff? A lot of my Instagram posts, to be super honest, a lot of my Instagram posts are mainly just there to be like, like I posted a video on YouTube and I feel like I can do better. So I do wanna work on that. I'd love to do collabs here on AuthorTube with some other AuthorTubers, that would be a lot of fun. I'd really love to use my platform to shout out 
other channels, other smaller channels that I enjoy. I did find quite a few new channels or new to me channels um, over NaNoWriMo. So I would like to just sort of like shout them out, not necessarily in like a set video, but I had a couple videos last year where I just was like, hey, I found this channel and go look at them. They're awesome. So I'd like to continue doing that this year. Also kind of same as last year, I'd like to improve my filming and editing skills. Um, I do have some specific things in mind for that and we'll see where it goes. Again, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. It's just going to be what it is, but that is something I'd like to improve. And I know a lot of these goals, you're probably like, none of these are like super specific and none of, not many of them are very measurable in terms of like, this is the goal. And for a, a real goal, two of the big things that it needs to be is specific and measurable. You have to be able to look at the goal and be like, did you accomplish this thing? Yes or no. And a lot of my goals this year are not specific and measurable like that. And we'll, I'll, I'll circle back around to that in a second. I do have several personal goals I'd like to share with you too. I have these broken down into like a health and fitness section, a mental health section, and a home projects section. For my physical health, I have two sort of major goals. The first one is to continue taking walks pretty much every day unless it's raining. We do have the dogs now so they definitely encourage me to go outside and make sure that they are exercised and not crazy from not being exercised. So that's a very good motivator and incentive to get out there. Right now it's pretty easy because it's chilly and it feels pretty good outside but obviously when it's like a hundred degrees in the summertime I'm not going to want to go out there as much. And in order to combat that a little bit I am going to make it a make myself purchase some new clothes that will be appropriate outside Texas summer attire. I basically live in jeans like all year. I have all it's all I wear. I wear jeans and I need to buy something that's a little bit cooler, a little bit more breathable so that in the summertime I'm not like sweating and disgusting. I mean I'm gonna be sweaty but less sweaty maybe than if I'm wearing jeans outside. The other thing that is pretty much the same as last year is I want to try to eat some sort of balanced or healthy lunch. And I think the big problem I was running into last year is I just didn't know what to eat. I Nothing looked good. And so what I want to do hopefully early on this year is make a list of lunch options and actually schedule out some lunches for myself through the weeks. I think that'll help me stay on track with that. For mental health, this is a big one. I need to take more time off work. I need to take more time off work. I work for a very small business and I get very few paid days off during the year. We get six government holidays off, like Christmas and New Year's and like Memorial Day, like those ones. And then on top of that, I get 10 additional days. Sick days, personal days, whatever I wanna use them for, but I only have 10, which is not very much. And in the past, I had sort of hoarded my days. <laughs> I didn't wanna use them all up early in the year because because then what if something came up later in the year and I had to take off time, you know, like I was all like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not worried about it this year. My boss is pretty flexible, which is nice. If we want to take more than 10 days off, he doesn't care. He's not going to pay us for any more, but we can usually, unless there's some sort of scheduling conflict, usually he does not care if we take off extra days beyond that 10. So I'm like, you know what? Let's take off some extra days. Okay. Earlier, several, several years back, the big reason or one of the big reasons I didn't like taking off unpaid days was because obviously I'm not getting paid. So it would be a dip in our income for that month. Several, several years back, that was kind of not great. We weren't in like a super amazing financial situation. And now we're still not, we're not like millionaires over here or something, but we have enough where if I took an extra day or two off, it's not going to hurt us. You know what I mean? My goal for 2022 is to make sure I have at least one three-day weekend every month. I don't feel like that's too much to ask. I don't feel like that's out of line. And I feel like that will really help me to not feel stressed and overworked. The other thing I want to make sure I'm saying here is that those three-day weekends, I want them to be for rest and work. We're looking for a balance here. 
I don't want to use them as like, oh good, I have an extra day to catch up on work stuff. No, I want to rest on that extra day off. Finally, for home projects, if you're interested, we do have a big landscaping project we're going to try to get done in this first quarter, which I'm really excited about. Our backyard, I've showed this a couple times, but anytime it rains, our backyard becomes a pond and it takes it the better part of a week to actually like evaporate and not be a pond anymore. And it didn't used to be like a huge issue, but now that we have the dogs, they will run straight into the giant mud puddles and then they're a mess. So we're like, we got to take care of this because otherwise like, then they can't really go outside for like a week, which is terrible. So we're trying to get all that straightened up in the first quarter. After that, one of the goals I had from last year that we didn't get to was replacing that attic stair unit it needs to be replaced it's very old that shouldn't be like a huge deal I'd like to get that completed by the midway point in the year after that the other big big project is to have our floors redone I don't know if we will have the funds or the bandwidth to do that I really want to get that done because these cart where it's all carpeted in our house and especially now with the dogs like they get it you know they're tracking in stuff and it's hard to clean and this carpet is just old and grody so I'd like to get it replaced. So those are my 2022 goals. It's kind of a lot, but like I said, a lot of them are not super specific and there's not really an overall end goal, so to speak, for a lot of these categories. And I did this on purpose for a very specific reason. And that reason is something I'm going to share with you on Friday in my next video. I was gonna, I was thinking about combining it with this video, but I was like, nah, it's gonna be too long. So I was like, I split it into two videos. So I hope you will stay tuned for that because I think it could be very helpful for people who left 2021 feeling overwhelmed and burned out. In the comments, please do let me know what your goals are for 2022, whether you have writing goals, reading goals, social media goals if you want to share if you have like an author tube channel that you would like to share please let me know I'd love to check it out if I haven't already if you have personal goals that you want to mention absolutely I would love to hear those too if you liked this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already make sure you click the subscribe button I post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays you can find me over on Instagram at Meredith Phillips writes and you can head over to my website meredithephillips.com to sign up for my newsletter thank you so much for watching I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time Bye. Why can I not? Oh, you know. <laughs> I think the folds of this cowl are getting in the way. I'm just gonna start. <sighs> I do plan to continue my same Tuesday, thir Tuesday, Thursday? No.